Well, it is indeed. Welcome to the Totally Awesome Fishing Show. This time, moving pictures. Anyway, this is a non-fishing one. This is a midweek filler left over from the dreaded lockdown. I thought, do you know what jobs can I do? I'm running out of so many jobs. Well, there's plenty of jobs at this place. One was get my trailer totally renovated for work. Not a fishing one, but some of you guys might be interested. And then I hit the garden. Not with a little tinky trowel, with an axe. Well, yes folks, another project. Brought back from the boneyard, my old trailer that I've had years. I actually had, it's all seized up here, two lids on it that folded up either side here. And in fact, this must be, wow. It used to belong to my uncle, I think. And uh, it was originally, he bought it second hand probably 35 years ago, more, but it's older than that. From the SEB, I think it was. There's the Southern Electricity Board, and they, they got these holes here where they had equipment. Um, I think it had in there a compressor and workman's tools and stuff like that, rather than tools, the actual compressors and jackhammers and stuff like that. So, consequently, it took a bit of weight, this one. It's only a small two-wheeler, but it's got the old leaf springs here that are suspended, and they're really, really powerful. Underneath the chassis is all okay. I'm not going to mess around with that too much. I just thought I'd tart it all up a bit. It's been a variety of colours depending exactly what sort of paint I've got left over. The tyres are the tyres, the bearings are the bearings, the cobwebs are the cobwebs. It's one of those things that once you use it, you think, oh, what a good job. I didn't get rid of that old trailer. And I've got an old spare wheel on here, 140 years old. Lord knows I'll ever get that off again. So I'm going to wire brush this out, wire brush it down, sand it roughly, sweep it out, give it a coat of paint. And then I guess just put it back in the boneyard, ready for when I want to use it again. I'll probably leave this suspended bit in the middle. It comes out, look, just lifts out like that. I built that in the middle. Um, he says proudly, and I had it all hinged with flaps. But, you know, I don't use it, it's just storage, but I have it covered with tarp. I leave this in there to take a piece of Cajun and tarp, because it keeps it all dry. All I've done is put a new floor in here, screwed it straight onto the other one, big piece of ply, so at least I can get stuff in there. The paint store is looking dire in this lockdown. I've no idea what colour I'm going to dig out and paint it. Don't think Magnolia would go down too well. Some of these paints are so old. They're probably collector's pieces, but if you cut the skin off, there's still paint, you stir it all up with the oil based paint, they'll still be okay. The thing is, having a trailer is one of those things that's, you know, it's not, it's not a necessity until it is a necessity, if you know what I mean. That brush isn't strong enough. When you want to use one, you want to use one, and very often, if you don't maintain them, possibly like I don't, they'll let you down at some stage. This is not a full-on renovation. This is what I would call a tart-up. Just trying to give it a bit of paint, making me think it's better than it is. As you can see by the daylight through the wood on the front of the chassis there. Perhaps I'm, perhaps I'm urinating in the wind. As you can see by the gap through there. It's getting near its last legs, but hey ho, aren't we all? Hopefully this will last me my lifetime and do all the jobs I want it to. I'd say these small SEB trailers with the spring hangers and the leaf springs there will probably take, I'm gonna say I've had a ton in there. <laughs> it really does straighten out the leaf springs, so they nearly go the opposite direction. This certainly takes an easy half a ton, because it did take, before, obviously, a compressor in there. You can see here where I'm rubbing it back, there is as shiny steel under there as it was probably 50, 50, at least 50 years ago. Rusted here but not rusted through because I've kept it dry most of the time. Been outside but covered it over so this will clean back but this is good steel you see under here. <laughs> and that's a sneeze.
Well, boys, waste not, what not. The inside is all plywood and wood. It's all going to get graunched up when I put bricks and God knows what else in there. Timber, rubbish, trees, branches. So I figure use up the last of my stain. And that should cover. Oh my God, that's going to look stunning. Obviously, till it scratches off. But it's all about tarting the old girl up, putting a bit of lippy on her, get her looking better than she is. It's the ultimate worst thing you can have in lockdown. Horrible weather. Mind you, I don't know what's more horrible. Bad weather, when I can't get fishing anyway, or good weather, which is good for me messing around in the garden, but it just makes me want to go fishing even more. It's a nightmare. It goes on and on. That's going to cover sweet. Good old bit of fence stain. You can't go wrong. You know it makes sense. <laughs> no, no, you know it makes fence. Oh dear, I should be on television. That went in the eye. Lovely. Because we've got brown eyes. Well, there you can see the inside is all done. So that should hopefully be drying off. Quite pleased with that, actually, the way it's come up. It's a shame I'm going to put all the rubbish in it. And I think it's time to go and investigate tea, which tonight is, yes, it really is spag bowl, and it really is tipping down with rain yet again. We've had some fantastic weather. I'll be back out to see you tomorrow morning. Right, I've got a couple of tins of bits and pieces of blue here. I've got metal paint with rust protector for the black, but it's ancient. Now, if there's a skin on top of this, which I suspect there will be, what I do is get a flat knife like this. I just get a little squirt of oil, smear it on the knife, and go just around the edge, tight to the tin edge, if you can see that, sawing. Obviously, the reason it's got a skin on it is because there's a void of air when you put the tin lid back on. So, if you're really... Then I put a fold in it like this, right? I can just touch it with my hand, fold it over again, and I just squeeze the surplus paint out of it like this. So, that's that done. In the bin. Then, on my old rags, wipe the knife clean. But never stir with a knife, because the old saying is, you'll stir up family strife. So this, this paint is obviously okay. I'm not sure about that blue. It's, I've, had this, I've had that 20 years. Right. Bit of old rag. Very, very watery paint this, for some reason. Okay, and then we'll have, so we know black's okay. Got red there, that's not good. Oh, that one's moving. That one's not. So I'm guessing one's liquid gloss, I should think, or one's a non drip. Again, what's this one like? Let's just have a little, little, little skin on it. So, again, where's that piece of oil? A little bit of oil I've got. Just smear it, it just stops the paint sticking to the edge of the uh, you don't want that skin in there you want that skin out now this one I'm going to need to lift the skin pinch it like this if I can all right I just let that drain off there and it goes across into the rubbish into the rubbish bin you go my boy messy job it's a messy job but it just saves throwing a tin of paint away that's perfectly good. And I think I'll probably be using this one first. Okay, again, 
stir up because a lot of the thicker paint will be at the bottom. So you want to be able to stir it right up. I thought I'm going to. I'm going to go for this blue one. I don't think I'll bother with that. I'll keep those as spares. Quite a bit in here. Not quite half a tin. Don't waste any. Paint saved his paint earned. Now, selection of a brush, gentlemen. It's horrible out there. It's raining. It's not the world's best weather for painting. This is all okay. So I'm going to go for the blue along the outside here and black on the corner trims here and across the mud guard there. Any black I've got left, I'll splosh around the front there. Righty ho, guys. Let's give this... <laughs> Let's give this vivid blue a little bit of a look at. Good paint. I know this one's a good paint. I remember using this about 25 years ago. I think it was when I was still at one of his shops. If I run out, I shall be using the other blue. So it's going to be a two-tone trailer. Not two-ton, two-tone. Wow, that is some blue. That's like an electric blue. I won't like getting all my rubbish in this one. I'm not going to like. I'm not going to like messing this up when I get it all nice and pretty. I should be an artist. here I'll tell you what when I go down the local refuse dump they're gonna see me coming aren't they with a the blue like this then what I've got to do is got to check the running board here because I might have a bulb gone out I think wifey said the last time I left there might have been a bulb gone Okay, going to be doing some, now what do they call it? Detailing. Detailing I'm going to be doing now. Detailing with a bit of black paint. I've no idea what this stuff's like. So we're going to try it. Oh, it's sort of black. Not thick, but it's supposed to be good for rust protection. And I'll certainly settle for that. Look, this is just my works trailer. That's what I do when I'm usually, usually jump dumping rubble, um, picking up shingle, stones, sacks of sand, cement, anything heavy like that. I put the timber in the car because it goes, that's why I have an estate car because it goes right down the middle of the car, which is uh, very handy. I don't really want a great big four wheel drive thing. I find the, the giant pickups, which I obviously looked at. There's just no space in them, but you, you can't get any long in them. They're like four feet long. I need at least six feet. I can get about ten feet fishing rods down the uh, down the middle of my car. Okay, it's you know the rods are up on the, on the dashboard at the front. I don't care. I just want to go fishing. This is going to look what I would call a smart tart. I'm going to do the inside there. Miss that, please. There we go. It's going to cover anyway. That's the main thing is getting coverage and having enough paint. Getting through my stocks of paint during this lockdown like you wouldn't believe. So many projects and so little paint. Timber, I'm okay for. I'm not too bad for timber. Tomorrow I'm going to be making something different. What do you guys think of my works chair? It's an antique Edwardian summer chair. I'm calling it a summer chair, darling. That's another renovation project, by the way. 
is this or get coronavirus. I really do not need the virus at my age. That would certainly mess up the fishing somewhat, more than somewhat. Well, I'm going to have enough paint by the look of it, that's good. Well, believe it or not, I actually got nearly as much paint on me as I did on the trailer. <laughs> But I'm going to let that dry off. What I have got to do, I'm going to back my cart and plug my uh, trailer board in, my running board here. I think there was a bulb gone in there. So now's the time to do that. Turn it around. Back my, back my cart, hitch it up. And sometimes you do get a wire bust off in here. You know, there's about six or eight wires in there. You can put it up on the internet, get the colours right. Depending what your setup is. And I've got the running board underneath there and loose. So I tie it up via these lanyards on here. Okie doke, let's pull the car over and get the lights checked. <coughs> I've got I've got spare bulbs. Sometimes, because I don't use this, I find this with plug extensions that I've got, not the actual extension lead, but I've got positions around the garden that's got power points. They get these little fluffy cobwebby spider things in there and then sometimes they don't uh, work and you think oh something's blown. You look at the circuit board and the circuits all the RCDs are okay, they haven't tripped and sometimes it's that loose or there's cobwebs in there. Let's have a little go here. Yeah, it feels tight. I can get it out. I said, I can't get it out now. Sometimes you can get away. It looks okay to terminals, but you can get just a bit of uh, emery paper. Just make the contacts a bit better here, like this. Look, this is my way of doing it. There's going to be some guy on it. Says, oh, it's not the way to do it. I'm a detailer. I'm a bulb detailer. This is the way I'm doing it. It might work, it might not. Just renew those contacts nice and tight. Oh, I love it when a plan comes together. Do you know what? That saved me a light bulb. Mind you, I'll pull you an epileptic fit looking at that that close. Oh my God. But there we go. Yes, it's the indicator bulb. That goes around that way. That's locked together. This goes over there, and because there's a gap there, guys. Look, I'll just tell you that reason there is so that lights your number plate up and throws the light across. That's what I believe that's that panel's for. So, screws back in. So, how easy is that? You don't have to have a new bulb all the time. Obviously, keep spare bulbs. I have spare bulb box in the car, but this way. You might not actually need a bulb, just check the contacts. A little bit of emery paper or something like that. Keep that nice and tight. That one's tight. This one's all working. Right. Glass of red wine, I feel, guys. Before I go. You guys might have had this problem. I'm sure everybody has. There we go. This slides up here, normally. This is Mike's old drill, this one. I'll burn them out. Right, but that, if you can see that here, is for taking this, okay? And because people rip them in and out, I'm gonna blame Michael for doing this, you rip them in and out, that breaks. Oh, happy days, either you lose your chuck key. No, get yourself a rubber band, half hitch it once, twice around there. This is a little hitch we use for marlin fishing. And we're trolling. Tuck it in like that. Now it won't slide up and down. And all we've got to do is put a half hitch over the top here. Boom, there's your chuck key. Whenever you want it, it's there. You can carefully on the side here like this. I'm not going into the wire, I'm coming across the top of the wire. Gently slide the blade. You can split it apart, look. 
hold it and it should there we go pop off bin job done chuck keys where you know it is did i mention a glass of red wine a glass of red wine or something i think so lo and behold it stopped raining tomorrow i'm working over by the tackle shack right off we go So no, my archway's holding up well, thank goodness, anyway. I'm trying to move this pampas here. Well, no, I'm not moving this, it's the size of a pickup truck. But that was a small plant. But way over there, I've got a gap. And I'm just figuring I might split this up. So I started work on it. But what I'm using, just so people know, is, these are relatively shallow rooted, but they do spread. So it's, you know, it's quite a, quite a, a spread of roots under there some of which I tear up anyway but trust me I've moved enough of these guys to know you can barely kill pampas grass they get hit by lightning in Argentina burn out I believe and come back stronger so pickaxe is a great big old school pickaxe it has a point so you can start with the point first and then it's got a flatten end so you can leave the stuff up with a flatten end as well so I've been trying to chop at an angle sort of straight down but break the soil up first but I need the pickaxe because it's clay there's a lot of stones in here because when we had the extension built there well there's Colin you might see him up there you might not I've got a small small camera he's looking he's looking I don't think we got anything out for him Dad must put some bacon fat out for him So I've got the bulk of that loosened up. I've also got a big crowbar that I use to split these out. Um, I'm, it's such a huge one, we've been meaning to do this one for years. I've got to get it rocking before I start wailing at it with an axe. I'll just show you in the middle, quite interesting. We cut this in previous films. You might have seen it, I might not put the film up yet. Look how far that's grown. That's grown 18 inches in about three weeks. And the inside just dies, look, like this. Goes rotten and it tends to spread around the outside. So really it's eating its way out here all the time. So I'm gonna see if I can take maybe that corner off there. And then I can get to some of this rough stuff inside. Look, it just pulls out, all dead. But what that does is just tend to make the green stuff grow further around the outside. I've got a huge steel bar, I'm going to try and get it under there and maybe axe through there, cut that corner off. But I might try the axe first. Then this bar, once I get rigid, jammed underneath, use the back of the log splitting axe. It's generally stand it will never bend. There we go. Oh, you no doubt gather that I do my gardening at a totally different level to people that use a little dinky trowel and hand fork. But then I've got bigger plants to move. I wish I had bigger fish to fry. So I've got uh, another load to plant, they've all got to go I'm afraid, it's a grotty day today that's for certain, lockdown wonder today, wind, rain, I'm trying to get this one done, whoo, oh my, it's blowing 25 knots, had a load of rain uh, last night for my pipe setup. it's brought the level up, 
and it's dropped off all the uh, algae, quite a lot of it. And I tell by my bullet hole over there that it's actually come up a good two inches, so that was a lot of rain last night. We need it. I've got a gap over here that I want to fill up. I can't even have a bonfire soaking from last night. Anyway, I've got some free plants, that's the main thing. Can't get to the garden centres yet until I make my own. So that's where they come up like, look, look, with the big plumes, these are finished now. Those are the same as this size here. And that's how I planted three there, and basically you just put them in, foot or so deep, because they're, they're grasses, they're tough. Just heal them in. Maybe I'll come around and chuck a bucket of water, we've got so much rain coming today. And hopefully it's all pad up this area. I make a sort of windbreak there. Now I've got quite, quite a big gap. I have had stuff here before, it doesn't seem to grow well. I think this, this water there might be a hole in the liner and it comes through, makes it very wet. And I think I might pop one in here and it'll twin up with one on the other side there. And weeds in it as well, I love it. Yeah, that's wet that ground. Well, they should like it. As my granddad used to say, they've got two chances, boy. One and none. I think I'll put this big one in there. Oh my God. That is a four pound chub if ever I saw it. A long time since we've been fishing with worms. Long time since I've been fishing. Period. So I just tread those in like that. They're so easy to plant, it's ridiculous. The hard work is chopping them up. Come back in a year's time, guys, and see where this one's gone. Now, I don't normally plant anything along this entire bank up here, other than grass that blows across in the field. But I'm gonna put this one here. This is what we used to put to all our compost here, grass cuttings, leaves. So I just tread it in. And I'm putting it in line with the tree, so it's not actually, when it comes up, going to uh, block our view there. It might just come up as a feature. Again, I just don't normally plant stuff here, but it's such a weird year. I think, why not? Why not, indeed? Everything needs a chance. Well, I pulled up a load of nettles. Got stung on the wrist, as you do. And I've got one big clump. I think, do you know what? I'm going to put it in here as a bit of a windbreak. It might be a mistake. I want to come and repair the fence here. It might be uh, grown up huge and I can't get to repair the fence. Oh, it looks all, all wobbly, so it's all going to be repaired there. Yet another job. Perimeter, perimeter fence mending. Right. That's all. That's all the job's done for today, I feel, guys. I think it's uh, an inside job now. <laughs> an inside job. Oh, makes me seem like a bank robber. Well, I'm on a bank, aren't I? I'm on a bank here. Clear that out. Sort out later. Rake. Home. Whew. I built all this, too. Another problem. That's been up there 13 years. Wind's pushed over slightly, the concrete fitting, but it's still going, still going. Amazing, a gazebo built by an idiot, and it's still there. So, thanks for watching the Totally Awesome Fishing Show. It's a non-fishing one, I realise that, but at the end of the day, it's something to watch, isn't it? It is something to watch. Friday's Big Time Fishing one, don't miss it. Don't forget, also, hit the notification bell, let us know both channels, TA Fishing, TA Outdoors, subscribers, Ding, bash, crash, whatever you want to hit, helps us out. And of course, if you want to help us out, Mike does merch as well. There's a little bit there. If you want to help us, great. If you don't, no problem. Plenty of films coming. I am almost a quarter of the way through 2021 with backed up films. So relax, guys. The Totally Awesome Fishing Show is the one to watch.